now Europe is facing so many challenges from, from China, from Russia, but we are so divided. Uh, why? And why is it difficult to, uh, to think so difficult to start joint initiative and actions? And why, using Angela Merkel's wording, do not Russian missiles or Chinese or China ships, yet German cars uh, suddenly pose a threat to the US security. But I'd just like to um, stake out the positions on what we've been doing on the security front the last few years, which clearly indicate that uh, we're not going anywhere. The United States is, uh, security is linked directly to European security, and we're here and we're demonstrating that on a daily basis with our forward uh, deployments leadership in that area, also with, uh, with our institutional uh, stance from Congress sending the largest delegation in history to the Munich Security Conference to show it's just not about one president or one person in the United States, how we feel about transatlantic relationship. The biggest challenge we are all facing is the aggression by Putin's Russia, or Russia's Putin. In, in both ways. So we have to be very clear on that. Uh, it's the occupation of Crimea, as we all know. It's, it's the situation in, in Donbass, the aggression there, the violation of INF. Uh, in the case of Germany, very strongly the disinformation campaigns uh, we, are, we are facing. So the worst thing we can do, or the best thing to serve Putin, is to struggle internally and to struggle visibly, internally, or even uh, facing a certain, certain infight um, in, in the alliance. So we have to be clear that uh, NATO is still the, uh, the joint guarantee against this aggression we are facing and what we see what, what is happening in, 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 in Ukraine, for example. In the opinion of, of many European politicians, uh, President Donald Trump does not care about the views or interests of the Europeans. Uh, so, and perhaps a kind of provocative question, why does President Trump see traditional European alliance as uh, economic rivals always? Donald Trump is an American president. Donald Trump's first responsibility is for the United States. Donald Trump says America first. Now what does any leader in the world say otherwise? Chancellor Merkel, Germany first, obviously. Uh, De Gaulle, uh, Macron, whatever. Any leader who does not say my country first is a traitor. Obviously enough, you can help other countries, you can cooperate with other countries, but putting the interests of your country first is an obligation, a duty of every political leader. Now, we all know that the United States has its share of problems, economic and otherwise. We know that the United States uh, spends a lot of money on international issues, uh, whether it's military or economic, assistance, um, presence, and so on and so on. And we all know that Europe, for the last 20 years at least, it has been a free rider. Uh, NATO, NATO means the United States. Without the United States, NATO security guarantees don't exist. When I hear President Trump saying America first, I think he's just sincere and perhaps he's doing away with uh, hypocrisy. We have lots of hypocrisy in international relations and this is a normal part of international relations. But be aware that when we in Poland, at least some part of Poles, hear that Germany is um, thinking about the whole Europe, not about Germany first, uh, we think first about Nord Stream 2, the, the topic that we've been speaking about, and second about so many other topics uh, like trade, like companies, like public health, for industry um, in which it is very well seen that Germany has been putting, and this is normal, I'm not judging that bad. What is the secret of Hungary's Hangar, foreign policy and what are the interests of, of Hungarian government? Superpowers and Viktor Orban has been always trying to maneuver between global superpowers, so that's his 
key sort of modus operandi when it comes to um, foreign politics. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, like bilateral relations, American Hungarian relations quite, were quite frosty during the Obama administrations, that, that the Obama administration was quite harshly criticizing the democratic backsliding and the anti-democratic like sort of um, policies of, of the Hungarian government. And it not necessarily changed right after uh, um, Trump took power, despite the fact that uh, the, the Hungarian prime minister was the first who endorsed Trump. Due to the shared values when it comes to anti-immigrant, anti-PC, anti-establishment sort of um, um, shared values, but, but also because, and I think his, his calculation was quite correct, that Viktor Orban was aiming for a sort of a shift uh, in terms of uh, um, the, the, the approach of the United States that the Trump administration is not going to interfere and they're not going to try to restrict the, uh, the Hungarian government when it comes to democratic backsliding.